About two months ago, I got probably one of the best comments I ever got. Amazing video. I started it off when I was in the middle of a busy day and I really thought it was going to be a good, boring video. But hell man, I was so wrong, it was amazing. Try to keep these kinds of videos, like with you talking. No matter which storytelling you go with, just do it. It's enjoyable the way you tell a story. Amazing work again. Wow. Um, first of all, Tony, thank you, man. That, I mean, like two months ago, this was probably the, one of the best comments I ever got. I've started so many videos since that time that I can't put into a cohesive story. So I've decided to start a new series and I'm gonna dedicate it to, uh, to Tony Leva, if you're out there watching. This is Tokyo Scramble Rambles. <laughs> topic from the last video that I failed to make um, that I was trying to write about time and uh, I'm just going to give it a go on Tokyo Scramble Rambles I'm going to take this topic I'm going to give myself 15 minutes on the clock because I don't want to just ramble you guys to death and uh, I'm just going to spew freestyle uh, just whatever pops into my head and if you guys like the series or if you like this video then uh, when you leave a comment down below, give me uh, another topic, another word, uh, something that you would like to have broken down from maybe a, a Japanese sociological lens, historical lens. Before we get started, I need to just, I'll just caffeinate myself a bit more. Almost there, sufficiently caffeinated. Okay, no cuts, no editing. I'm just gonna go freestyle. I'm actually kind of nervous because usually I can edit myself. <laughs> well, let's get this started. I'm going to get 15 minutes up um, and then I'm just gonna go for it. So three, two, one, and here we go. Okay, time, um, time. I think there's a lot of stereotypes when it comes to time in Japan um, uh, and they're kind of true, they, they are true. Like when you think about time in Japan, you're thinking about things running on precision time and precision time pieces and the Shinkansen being like, you know, five seconds uh, in like a five second error window. And, um, you know, you hear stories about uh, the train companies apologizing for a train being, you know, 10 minutes late. If there's an event or a meeting or anything, everyone's always early. They come early. It starts on time. It finishes on time. Um, it Japan really is a time obsessed culture. And there's reasons for that that I might cover in a different video. If you were to ask me maybe to do a video about the concept of respect or or love or responsibility or something like this. Yeah. Today's about time. So what's the best way to explain to you? what Japanese culture really says about time. Um, you know, I'm going to reach into the arts because that's a great place to start for anything, yeah? Uh, Japanese arts, no matter what you're talking about, uh, always place a lot of emphasis on the negative space. And this is a theme that you'll see across every aspect of Japanese culture, whether it's the language, it's like a social situation, whether it's um, calligraphy, uh, painting, uh, music. Uh, music, since we're talking about time, would be a really interesting one. If, if anyone out there plays Western music, we have all sorts of counting systems. A one yen, a two yen, a three yen, a four yen. You can break down the beat, right? And uh, if you're into jazz or anything like that, the beats get broken down really, really specifically and very, very precisely. So um, if if you were to look at Japanese music, like traditional music, not pop music, we've looked at Japanese traditional music used in, for example, kabuki theater, um, there's all sorts of different counting systems. It's kind of like counting, but they, they're built in a way to emphasize the things, the space in between, where not everything is laid out like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like this, like as it would be in jazz, right? Uh, one of the uh, famous kind of simple way of doing an eight count Totan is uh sounds something like this. So in, in English we'd say one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and 
uh, and in Japanese and the traditional music, uh, count like this might sound something like one of the patterns. Su ha ha i yo ho ho to tan. And this is eight. Su ha ha i yo ho ho to tan. And that to tan finishes on the eight. Okay, so, but if Japanese music made all of these counts, they counted everything, this wouldn't be Japanese because Japanese is about what's not being said, right? So um, the count would be kept using a vocal pattern and the vocal pattern, this whole pattern would be internalized, but the vocal part would only say the iyo and the ho ho. So su ha ha iyo su ho ho to tan. Everything else is silent. So if you're listening from the outside, an eight count would sound like this. Iyo ho ho. Iyo ho ho. Interesting, right? Um, and since time is not something that's uh, straight, uh, it's something that's flexible, that's malleable. So it can expand, it can contract, it can get longer and shorter. And how you change these vocal patterns would change how all of the artists are feeling time. So a longer yo could slow things down, right? Um, I won't get into that too much. The point being here is that time is uh, understood through a concept of ma. Ma, literally the kanji for space, for a space. Um, if, you, if you're bad at counting in music, someone would tell you ma ga wari. But someone could also tell you ma ga wari if you're like kind of awkward in a social situation as well. It's more about the things that are in between the beats and not really on the beats themselves. And this can be applied to social situations as well. Um, uh, that's why you have an entire culture that's all about, you know, putting more emphasis on the things that aren't being said as opposed to things that are being said, which is why being able to read the air is such a big thing in Japanese. Kuki o yomu. Kuki ga yomeru hito, yomenai hito. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of people. Kuki ga yomenai hito ipa iru. So uh, people who can read the air are people who can kind of like see what's not being said yeah and in music and, and this idea of time and art and culture and everything in japan a lot of it has to do with the things that aren't being said it's about ma so time uh in in japan is kind of about ma it's a feeling right uh it, you just kind of know it's a feeling you know when to start you know when to stop you know what when to move on to the next thing yeah um but this seems to be at like a huge, it, it's in contradiction to this idea of this modern Japan where everything's like so precise and laid out second by second and this kind of like flowery, expansive, fluid conception of time. Um, this is going to sound like a weird way to bridge into this topic of why this contradiction actually makes sense, but... There's a famous rock band uh, from, I don't know, maybe the early 80s, don't quote me on this, uh, called the Southern All-Stars, Wikipedia after. The Southern All-Stars, they have a famous song with a line that goes, uh, I might link that in the description later on. Um, Shiroku Jichu is the part I want to zoom in on. This is a Yojijuku go. For those of you who don't know, uh, Yojijuku go is there's a series of like these sayings in Japanese of basically four kanji that they squish together and they kind of create a special meaning or a special phrase. This one, Shiroku Jichu, is four, six, time, middle. Four times six is 24. G is like an hour and chu means middle, but it also means in this case throughout. So throughout 24 hours, basically throughout the day, all day long. I love you all day long. Um, but why am I bringing this up? Because it is Shiroku Jichu now, but in the Edo period, before the Meiji Restoration, the same Yojijuku go was actually Niroku Jichu. Niroku Jichu, obviously, 2, 6 is only 12. Why? Because before the Meiji Restoration, Japan ran on a 12-hour time a uh, system that was based on the animal, the horoscopes, the, you know, the, the mouse, like we have through the years, you know, the mouse and the, and the cow and the tiger and the dragon and the rabbit, year of the rabbit, all this stuff. There was hours for that. So you had the hour of the cow and the hour of the dog and the hour of the tiger. 
Um, it was it was a hor it was a horoscope every day of twelve hours. You had six during the day, six at night. The clocks back then used these like a weighted system where the weights would have to be shifted out or in depending on the time of the year, um, as people would match the time with sunset and sunrise. So as you know, during the seasons, uh, summer, the days get longer and the nights get shorter, and the opposite happens in the win winter. Uh, in the winter, the nights are long and the days are short. But the day is always made up of six hours. So in the summer, one hour would be a really long time. On our 24-hour system, it would be the equivalent of like maybe like two and a half hours, three hours. Um, and the, the hours, the six hours, these six periods at the night would be very uh, short. And the opposite thing would happen in the winter where the hour days, the six hour days would become very short during the day. And the six hours at nighttime would become very big. Now, uh, it's really hard to, to coordinate things based on this clock because it's not exact. Uh, a 24-hour clock is useful because the only thing that it references is itself, if that makes any sense. A 24-hour clock, really, if you think about it, it doesn't have, it doesn't mean anything. It's, it's literally referencing itself. That's what a clock is, so that everyone can just reference the clock. Um, whereas the Japanese at the time, even though they knew about a 24-hour system since hundreds of years before, they never adopted a 24-hour system because they didn't see how it had any relevance to reality. Time in Japan has to be something that's based on reality in the real world, and their 12-hour clock was based in the real world because it started at sunrise, it finished at sunset, and it matched the seasons. Bring me to my next major point, uh, which is the seasons, which is kind of how Japanese experience time. So if you look at modern society, you kind of have this clash of the uh, stereotype of like the type A personality who's obsessed with time and being precise. And on the other side of that, you have these same people who are willing to, you know, be so precise with time, are totally happy and comfortable sitting underneath a sakura tree um, all day long, literally just like laying down and watching like the sakura flower petals uh, rain down. And, and this this is why the culture sometimes feels like it's so at odds with itself. It's like a walking contradiction. But that's because uh, before they had to reintroduce the 24-hour system, Japan had always been a country that was trying to be in touch. Their sense of time was the seasons, was nature, was the, you know, the real world that was happening out there. And there's so much evidence of this culture, of kind of the heart of Japan still existing, even in modern day Japan now. Which is why any child that you can pull off the street, or anyone actually, any Japanese person you pull off the street, uh, they could tell you all sorts of things about the seasons that I don't think people in other countries just know. Uh, they can tell you um, what bugs come out in what season, and every season, you know, has a specific flower. Like, uh, you know, you could ask my kids; they all know. We're finishing up, you know, my my uh, the rainy season, and the rainy season flower is ajisai, and even kids know this. It's ajisai. Um, the the bugs that come out, everyone knows what bugs come out, and they'll listen and they'll hear the sound of a of a bug. You know, the most famous maybe being like the cicadas, the semi in summer. So, uh, you know, they'll know the bug and they'll know the season. And it gets so specific that, you know, um, they even have like uh, different types of cicadas. So depending on what cicada they hear, they know if it's like the beginning of summer, the middle of summer, the end of summer. Um, if you're hearing like the min min zemi and uh, higurashis at the, towards the end of the day, mi, 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 and the kana, 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 kana you know it's in the middle of summer and if you hear like the the mean means that me have started to die off and you only have like the tsuku tsuku boshi ones tsuku tsuku boshi, tsuku tsuku boshi, tsuku tsuku boshi, you know you're kind of at the tail end of summer this is getting a little specific but i'm just trying to demonstrate the fact that even a foreigner like me is like really aware of like all this stuff in the natural world you know even though i'm living in tokyo which is literally a concrete jungle and there's not a lot of green out you can step outside there's not a lot of green outside um so this, this idea of time for a, a Japanese person has very much to do, you know, being grounded in something real in the natural world. Um, a really, uh, I'm running out of time, but a really interesting, uh, if you have time, in a late Edo period, before the Meiji Restoration, um, like maybe around like 18, don't quote me on this, 50, late 1850s, something like that. 
Um, there was a Dutch naval officer who came to work in Nagasaki at the naval port for two years trying to help the Japanese Navy Navy uh, by the name of Willem Katendijke. Um, and he wrote a journal of his time working there. And inside he describes what the the kind of a bit of the zeitgeist, like what Japan was like at that time, what the people were like at the time, and what their work culture was like, what their perception of time was. And basically, they were always late. They were super unreliable. They might show up. They might not show up. Um, you couldn't set a meeting. People would just kind of like come whenever they wanted to. If you tried to set up a meeting with two groups of people, you know, one might show up kind of early and just sit down and start smoking and looking out the window and, you know, saying poetry, and then the other one will never show up. Um, he, he talks about um, trying to order from a lumber yard lumber to build a ship in time for the season when the tide is actually high enough to carry the boats out, the lumber just never arrives. Um, there's lots of frustrations that he has. And after two years, he basically gives up on the Japanese for being totally hopeless because they have no concept of time. Now, interestingly, after Japan switched over in after the Meiji Restoration, uh, this quickly changed in a matter of like five or ten years because uh, the Japanese government was so strict about having to modernize and get things on time. The introduction of the railroads, um, you know, introduced the necessity of the 24 hour uh, time clock that was referring itself, you know, just to keep the trains on schedule so they don't crash into each other. And since Japanese people were so bad at, at, at showing up on time, they started having these really strict measures to make sure that everyone got there on time. So for the trains, you had to be on the train five minutes before it left and they closed the gates. Uh, if you're working at a factory, you had to be in the factory uh, five minutes before work started because that's when they closed the dates. Uh, the same thing for schools, which is a whole nother topic. If you want me to ramble about schools, that's something you put down. Um, the schools, since they were training children to become good factory workers, same thing would happen. You'd have to be in the school five minutes before they shut the gate. You couldn't get inside. So this entire culture was kind of subverted. And that's why you run into this, what appears to be like a contradiction of uh, this kind of uh, culture that's really into the natural world, into nature, into taking it easy and experiencing time and being slow. And on the other side, it's like this type A personality that's just all over the place and wants to be super strict with the time. Wow. Okay, that was 15 minutes. Uh, if you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment. Um, if you'd like to see me ramble about anything else, please leave a comment down below, give me some ideas. That's it for today. Tokyo Scramble, out. I don't know how to turn this off. How do I turn it off? Oh, there we go.